I'm uh, shooting in the home of Ray Leibolt down in Ideal, Georgia. And uh, Ray has been kind enough to me to allow me to come into his home and and just kind of pan around and I want to just sort of show you Ray and Ray's lifestyle here. Ray leaves a, leads a very uh, humble life and uh, but very adequate. He's uh, carved a, made a good living for himself all these years and and uh, he lives down here by himself at the age of 92 is completely completely self-sufficient does a heck of a good job at housekeeping and keeping track of everything I don't know how he does it because I sure can't remember what I had for breakfast this morning and Ray seems to be able to to tell you everything that he can remember from the time he was 10 years old and, and before that even and um, Ray is uh, just sitting over here patiently kind of waiting for me to pan around a little bit there you go Ray and we were talking about a lot of different things uh, on the trip out here and at lunch today and you were um, mentioning some things about various people that you've known in the past and industries in Tunkhannock and some of the things that you've done and and probably one of the most important uh, things that that I that I didn't know I didn't know how many people how many businesses that you've worked for you started naming off all these far-flung things from the petroleum industry to well, I can't even remember them all. What What are some of the, the the businesses you've worked for and things you've done? Steel construction, uh, the petroleum industry, building of skyscrapers, radio towers, bridges. Uh, I had the honor of helping extend the TV antenna on the Empire State Building. Three Mohawk boys and an Irish boy did the job. I was 40 years old, and by that uh, time, an old timer, so I did the hooking on. But after the work was done, I went up as high as I could climb, and uh, I've made the uh, crazy statement I could look down on Africa, but I could actually look down on ships way out on the Atlantic, a considerable distance east of New York City. I have worked for the Space Administration, the Atomic Energy Commission, every petroleum producer, every power generation establishment east of the Mississippi and a few west of it. I had 57 years of major construction. Iron working, boiler craft, which is uh, related to power, and related to petroleum refinement, anything related to steam generation and the use of steam powered equipment, particularly for generation of electricity. You worked a little bit uh, for some cosmetic uh, companies too, right? Cosmetic companies and uh, Paul oh, Olive or. You're still on? Yes. Uh, I have worked for about every pharmaceutical uh, concern in the business and built huge autoclaves, they're called, for the production of very interesting uh, development of drugs, uh, not strangely, but for the record, companies that uh, produced all kinds of enhancement drugs. Viagra, that's made by Charles Pfizer, Grutton, Connecticut. I worked on the earliest uh, setup and development of the autoclaves, they're called, culture vessels, aluminum and special alloys for these cultures for making these pharmaceuticals where it was 
developed and produced. That's an amazing, uh, just an amazing statement. How many, how many states have you visited in your lifetime? I've been in every state in the United States except Alaska. I was near shore, but I never landed. I've worked in Lower Canada, Mexico, Central America, sugar production, cosmetics, soap production, Procter & Gamble, uh, anybody that made cosmetics and things of that nature needed the things that my employers produced, uh, mainly vessels and things which uh, were made of uh, joined metal plates. Now, uh, er earlier on, earlier on when you were just kind of getting started and you were you were a young fella, uh, what what all military experience did you have or working with the government? I'm, I don't care to go into a great deal on military experience. I tried to get in to the Air Force. I had a pilot's license, a solo license, but I was uh, essentially employed in important work supporting the war effort. I was rejected, told, no, you're more important where you are. Eventually, because it was an opportunity and toward my interest, I went into the CBs, the construction battalions which supported our armed forces in many, many ways, landings, uh, comparable to engineering effort for the Army, but this was for Navy. I don't, I'm no military hero, but I'm lucky I've lived this long and been through it. I could have been injured in my training and what experiences I had. That's, that's a, it's just, to me, it's an amazing, amazing story that you, that you still have the good health that you do after having done all that work with metal and welding and, uh, and everything. I'm sure that, that, uh, that took some effect on you. It, you, you. I notice you have a little cough every once in a while. Is that something that you might have picked up from uh, welding? Absolutely. Breathing those fumes, it's suicide. The breathing of lead oxide, manganese oxide, chromium oxide, com combinations of chrome and steel, the uh, non-corrosive, inoxidable materials, those gases and smoke are terribly injurious to the human being. They never told us this. I don't think they were aware of it. They're taking much greater precaution now with ventilation systems and air blowers would take those fumes away from you. And I always cautioned the students that were I was teaching and men that worked in my direction and supervision, I would caution them about this. And if I knew there was a hazard, I would at least try to alleviate some of the danger. You could never remove it all. But metals, some of our base metals, which we were not aware of it, are terribly injurious. I was exposed, and many people have been exposed, to mercury compounds. And uh, really an experimental thing by the Space Administration was by high, unusually high electrical current, mercury was turned into a plasma which in outer space would create an amazing thrust for driving things. Tremendous speeds could be attained in outer space, slowly at first, but the speed of these uh, plasma particles was such that eventually it gave tremendous thrust, but that became abandoned to a degree. Mercury is terribly poisonous and dangerous. Lead is more so than they ever knew. Paints, uh, lead compounds are very dangerous. I believe that the possibility that copper may be more dangerous than 
suspected. Zinc will give you fever and symptoms like the flu. Nay, oh, it'll wear away. It'll, it's very optimistic, but I think that zinc stays in your system. Some of it you never get rid of. Mercury, chromium, vanadium, tungsten, manganese, it doesn't just oxidize and leave your system. It stays there. And it has a bad effect and gives you symptoms of Parkinson's. You develop a palsy. And it's becoming more prevalent than they ever knew until recently they're starting to take precautions. But they're way too late with a lot of people. And I am one of those people.